Special thank you to Holly Miller, McPuffin, and Kaori Ann Mori for supporting the channel and supporting my content. Thank you so much, guys. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another subreddit video. Today, we are taking a look at a different subreddit that I've not looked at before. I was talking to a friend and I was like, hey, my channel's dying and it's a problem. And he was like, well, that's because you haven't done malicious compliance yet, dummy. So here we are. I'm going to take a look at r slash malicious compliance. Let's get into the video. So you want to use another store's service coupon? No problem. So this happened to me a few days ago at my dealer. For context, I'm a service advisor at a large domestic brand dealer in one of Texas's largest cities. This customer came in because her truck was pulling hard to the left and needed an oil change. I told her it might need an alignment, but I would have one of my tech look at it to see if nothing else was wrong. A few hours later, I call her and tell her that everything looked fine, but the alignment was out of spec and the tech was recommending one. She asks how much and I tell her our alignments are $119 for cars and light trucks, plus the oil change. I can hear her sigh over the phone and says, you guys are too expensive. This is why I hate dealing with dealerships. There's, there's got to be a coupon or something for me. Mind you, this was her first time visiting the dealer, no previous history or nothing. I tell her, ma'am, at this moment, we are not running any promotions, but let me see what I can do for you. I place the call on hold for about a minute, you know, for suspense. Lol. Pick up the line again and tell her, I spoke with my supervisor and we can use an internal coupon to discount the alignment to $79.95. She says, that's it? I say, yes, that's what we can do today and stay quiet. She says, okay, go ahead and do it. Fast forward a few hours. She comes in to pick up the truck and hands me a coupon from another dealer saying, Mother's Day special, full synthetic oil and filter exchange with tire rotation and two full wheel alignment for $189. I look it over and also notice it had expired a few days prior. I tell her, ma'am, this is from another store and it's also expired. She says, I spoke to someone earlier and they told me I could use it and that the expiration doesn't matter because it's not your coupon. <laughs> I asked her who she spoke to, but she couldn't give me a name. Of course. While I'm looking at this spectacular flyer, I realize the price is more expensive than my bill. Our service for her vehicle is $74.95, and plus the alignment at $79.95, she would be at just over $150. I try to get a word across to her to let her, to let her know about this, and as soon as I say, but mom, your total is, she cuts me off and says, either you take this coupon or get me a man. Manager. I'm not paying you expensive price. You guys are thieves. I say, Mom, I already discounted your alignment to $79.95. Your coupon is useless. It will be mo Again, she cuts me off and starts yelling. Somebody on the phone said I could use this coupon, and I will, and I'm done with you. I smile and say, okay, you are the customer. I proceed to adjust the ticket and change the price to make the total $189.99 plus tax. Mom, cash or card. Card. I charged her card with a smile and said, here are your keys, mom. Have a wonderful day. She stomped out of the door and peeled off. My boss then comes to me, asks, I heard yelling. What was she mad about? After I explain what happened, he could not stop laughing. It's been the joke on the service drive for almost a week now. <laughs> So a woman was angry about the price that she'd already had discounted. So she came in and, all right, okay, that's, so that's the, the level of this subreddit we're going to be working at, I guess. That was a long one. That's pretty funny. I, I now know what I've been missing out. An hour is an hour. I work as a waiter in a cafe in summer when I don't have to go to university for about two months each year. My boss makes a work schedule every week for the upcoming week. When the schedule says your shift starts, at 14.00, my boss wants us to come in 15 minutes earlier. Nothing wrong with that in my mind so far. The thing is, she also wants us to work in those 15 minutes. Additionally, it is company policy that when we write up our work hours at the end of our shifts, we are not allowed amounts of time that are smaller than half an hour for accounting reasons. So for example, if you start working at 13.45 and are done with cleaning up at 20.30, you write 14.00, 20.00, 30 for six and a half hours, even though you actually worked 6.75 hours. This means we would be working for 
free for 15 minutes every day of work. That is what my boss wants at least. If I was just sitting in the back, waiting my, for my shift to start, doing nothing useful in the 15 minutes, I would have no issues. But since I'm supposed to work, here is what I'm doing. I come in 15 minutes early and start working right away, like my boss wants me to. When I am done cleaning, however, and I can tell I will be done cleaning at, let's say, 2030, instead of going home and writing 2030 at the end of my shift, I work a bit slower for the last 15, 30 minutes or so. Not too slow so no one will notice it, but just slow enough to not be done at 2030. I will then be done at 2045, meaning I worked from 1345 to 2035. In my mind, that means I worked seven hours. Since I have to write that I started at 1400, I just write that I was done at 2100 and that I have worked seven hours. So a company policy that prohibits me from write writing 1345 to 2030 for 6.75 hours, which I would be totally fine with, combined with complying with my boss's orders, makes me work half an hour more on paper. I also told my colleagues to do the same, obviously. Too long don't read, company policy intended to save money on staff results in staff being more expensive than necessary. <laughs> it's genius. That's smart. I would take um, a note out of that book if it wasn't for the fact that I work from home at set hours, uh, but I also make £3.50 an hour because I'm an apprentice so well a little bit more than £3.50 an hour like maybe £4 an hour but but still it's <laughs> it's not a lot is it it's just half minimum wage and that's why I make YouTube videos where I earn no money <laughs> Only foreign citizens have to take the test. This is not my malicious compliance, but a colleague's. To give some backstory, we work in healthcare and my colleague comes from a different country. My colleague decided he wants to train to be a registered nurse. Because it is such a verbal profession, they require an English language test for anyone who isn't a British citizen. Except the English language test can be very difficult. We have had some colleagues who repeatedly fail despite being very proficient in their current role around patients and there is no issue at all in understanding what they are saying, and every time they fail, they have to pay out of their own pocket. One day, our colleague arranges to come in an hour later to sort out his passport. He later informs us that he is giving up citizenship of his home country to become a British citizen. We all question why he didn't go for dual citizenship, as if he moved back to his own country, he would have to reapply for citizenship. We then find out, because on paper he would be a British citizen and nothing else, when he applied to become a nurse, Nurse, he would not have to do the English test. Whether the rules work like this and he will get away with it, time will tell. But if it works, it is a handy loophole. <laughs> it's a really sad state of affairs where someone needs to abandon their own citizenship to get a job in the UK, but that's the UK for you, I guess. I got, I got nothing else to, to say on that. <laughs> It's just, it's just kind of depressing that it has to be done. Always open the windows. So I recently found this Reddit via a YouTube video and decided I would post my malicious compliance on here the next time I inevitably do it. A bit of backstory first. I worked as the head maintenance person in a school in my city in Canada. To say I have my hands full is an understatement. The school is 99 years old, turning 100 in July. It has been updated over the year, but the building is made out of brick and I'm constantly trying to adjust the hydronic heating system throughout the day as the building soaks up heat and keeps it. As an attempt to mitigate the heat, I found that opening all the windows in the school first thing in the morning before the staff comes in and then they can open or close the windows as they wish. Now where I am, our weather is pretty weird and yesterday it was cold, as in it had been 30 plus C Monday and Tuesday and yesterday it was sitting at 4 C with a wind chill that brought it to zero. So considering the temperature inside the school was sitting at 10c, I opted to not open the windows that morning and performed my morning routine. Well apparently the principal, my supervisor for the building, felt I had made the wrong decision and ripped me a new one, telling me to always open the windows from now on. Cue malicious compliance. Before leaving, I confirmed that he indeed wanted me to open regardless of the outside temperature, including the next day, Friday slash today, and a day with no students. He said yes, and if any staff had 
issues, I was to get them to complain to him, and motioned me to leave his office. So today I got up and checked the weather. Before going into work, it said it was currently negative 1C and negative 4C on the wind. On top of that, we got snow. The entire trip to work, I have this evil grin on my face, and as soon as I get in, I rush to open every window in the school, even the vents for the bathrooms, and I continue with my morning routine, pleased with what I did. Now since there weren't any classes for the day, the majority of staff didn't even show up until 10.30, three hours since I had opened the windows, and it was very cold inside the school, and all of a sudden I get a bunch of texts from staff about their cold rooms. I proceeded to tell every single one of them what the principal had said, and shortly after, I'm called to his office. As soon as I open the door, I can tell that he is very angry and very cold, and demands to know why I opened all the windows this morning. All I get to say is, well, yesterday you said, and he calmly says, wait. Now I'm known for being a smart ass at work, and between being malicious compliant and getting petty revenge on people, I've apparently built up a name for myself within the entirety of all 50 schools in my school board. My union reps love me. He now realises that he's f***ed up and starts laughing about it. He admits he screwed up his wording, and he's been having a rough couple of days apparently. This made his week, and says how he is now going to leave it to me to decide when the windows should be opened. We both had a very good laugh, and he ended up buying the stuff lunch. After the teachers heard what happened, they all bugged him a bit, but it was all in fun. That's what you get, I guess, for telling someone to open the windows, all of them, without fail, which isn't even a part of their job as a janitor, right? This is something they decided to do to make their job a bit easier. So it's really weird that the, the guy then called them up angrily and was like, how dare you not do a thing that isn't in your job description and you were doing voluntarily. Kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna say that <laughs> I reckon we've got time for one more you're working 20 minutes more every day unacceptable in the early 2000s I was living in the commuter belt and working in central London for those not familiar London only has one train line running through it from north to south okay pedants there is the hashtag cross Liz perp line coming but it's not here yet and this was 2000 something the rest of the lines terminate at somewhere on the circle line of the underground roughly for your average commuter that means your local train will go between one and four stations and so you'll favor jobs your side of the city to save getting a bus or tube but for many it involves one or two of them too and for me I only had one destination from my local station which was a tiny slow trains only one and it wasn't the station right across the road from my office to get where I would have to make a change. This added to the journey time just enough that I was five minutes late to work every day. However, I've lied to you. There was one and only one train a day that went to the station I wanted, but it left an hour earlier and it got me into work an hour and 20 minutes earlier. There was also a single train back in the evening 30 minutes after I clocked off. So my daily routine was to get the train with a change in the morning, arriving five minutes late, and in the evening I'd work 25 minutes extra and get the extra train home. With the station being so close, I was fine to leave it that close to the wire. I usually got a seat even cutting it so fine, so all was good for about 18 months. For some reason I do not understand, maybe it was my fighting with the guy who kept assigning me work, even though he wasn't my boss, my actual boss relayed that his boss, the head of IT, was unhappy with me constantly being late. I was young, I was naive, I thought they'd understand that I was working a net plus 20 minutes every day. My boss was actually very cool and didn't want me to be dealing with this, but his boss was making a stink, so he explained to his boss and the reply came back that I must be in on time because those are your contracted hours. I was young and naive, but that doesn't mean I wasn't a pedantic little sh I proceeded to get the early train, losing an hour's sleep each morning, and arriving at the office one hour and 20 minutes early. Took my shoes off, put them on my desk, set an alarm, and did my best to claw back the lost sleep. As people trickled into the office, I refused to work or even answer a phone until I was within my contracted hours. Come clocking off time, I would pack up and leave and go stand on the platform for nearly 25 minutes, staring off into the distance, thinking about all the work they are losing from me. K. 
cats having a fight outside. This lasted about a week before I was told I can't sleep at my desk. So I found the smallest break room that had a sofa and made that my nap spot. It wasn't comfortable, but I was pissed off at how strict they were being. Of course, I carried on going home when my contracted hours were up. A week later, my chance came. The shit had hit the fan and they needed me to work late. As I said before, my immediate boss was cool and I had a, I know you know what I'm really saying when I say this conversation with him about how this was outside my contracted hours, but I understand that there is give and take in that when it's needed or doesn't cause an issue, give and take, right? After that evening, I started showing up five minutes late again and nothing was said about it again. I also started staying right up until my train was due sometimes. Edit. To say that I didn't get paid overtime unless it was approved beforehand, like the day it hit the fan, I just worked the extra to finish up what, what I was doing and because I was young and dumb enough to think what hard work got you somewhere. Also, I worked late sometimes to make sure I was actually working the number of hours I should, but I didn't cut it so fine for the train. I also didn't do it most days anymore. It's what they get, I guess. <laughs> Seriously, jobs that are like grumpy about hours really it, it just gets me. I've done a couple of work, like badge jobs in the past. I worked at a factory making these plastic things where you just heat press screws into it all day. Mind numbingly boring. But when it comes to the end of the day, there's about 10 minutes left on the clock before the day ends and everybody is queuing up at the clock, getting ready to clock off. And it's like, because we have to wait until that time ticks around to clock off, no one's allowed to go home for this last 10 hours but no one's working. I don't understand why they couldn't just let us go. And then in another place I worked, everybody got filthy at this job. It was in a warehouse. We were lugging metal, specifically car exhausts. So we got filthy through the day. So it was kind of an agreed thing with all of the warehouse workers that five minutes before we finish our shift, everybody goes back to the break room, washes up before we head home, right? But, and although this was an agreed thing that everybody did, we had a supervisor who hated this. If you were in the break room for a couple minutes more than you were supposed to be at lunch or during your breaks, or if you were going back there a couple minutes before the end of your shift, he would come in and he would be angry at you. He'd be like, you could be doing this, that. You could be sweeping the floor of this warehouse. You could be doing blah. And I wasn't there long enough to ever really talk back to him, but Oh boy, do I wish that at some point when he moaned at me for getting ready to go home five minutes early, I really wish I could have just gone, tell you what, you find me a job that will take me five minutes, no more than five minutes, and you come back, I will do it before I go home. But if you take more than five minutes finding that job, I won't be here when you get back. I really wish I'd said that because he was just, he was insufferable. I only worked there for a couple of months before I got this apprenticeship, so it's not not so bad, but people had worked their years and they had to put up with it like every day. If you're an employer or a supervisor or a manager or any of that, be nice to your workers who are literally only working minimum wage because if you treat your employees like garbage enough, they're gonna look for other places to work. I did, plenty of people that worked there did. Just be a decent person to your employees because they're humans and they're barely working enough to support themselves. That's that's it. That's that's what I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. <laughs> this was a bit of a different one. We had lots of stories to read. Not much time for me to talk between them. If you enjoyed this, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll do some more videos on it. If you want to support me in making more content like this and more of my other content, I have a Patreon in the description down below or equally, you can click that join button to support the channel. It helps a lot more than you might realize, but by no means should you feel like you have to. I'm going to keep making content regardless. Other than that, thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.